In a land far, far away lives an adventurer. And little did she know, she was about to embark on a quest of a lifetime. And as she carefully spiral-laced her wool kirtle, she had no idea what each day henceforth would bring. Good morning, or should I say afternoon, because I couldn't fall asleep last night because I was so excited to shoot this video that my head was just spinning and I was trying to figure out what I was going to do and how all the shots were going to look. Gotten a little bit of a later start than originally intended. That seems to be the theme in a lot of my videos if you're new here. I'm going to be eating only medieval food for a week. You might be wondering why. Well, you know what? I really just like doing things like this on this channel. In fact, this is kind of a whole channel devoted to historical experimentation and other things related to historical stuff, including fashion, especially. I've been planning this video for a while, to be honest. I really just love cooking. And so something about the idea of only eating medieval food for a week was interesting to me. Just to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm also going to be wearing the medieval kirtle that I made for the entire week because that way I feel like I'll get a little bit more of an authentic experience. Also, my friend Brittany is in town right now visiting me, which means that she's going to get to try all of the foods that I make. So that's great. You don't just have to trust my opinion of how they taste. You're also gonna get a second opinion. So I'm really grateful that she's here and she's going to be a part of this video. For the recipes, I'm going to be using these two books. And most of these books just describe kind of like the upper class food that was being consumed. Wealthier people, of course, would have these massive banquet meals where they would have set menus that they would put together. Well, there's only going to be two of us doing this and I'm not about to make seven course meals for every single meal. So I decided I would modernize the duration of food consumption a little bit. Basically, we're going to be eating three meals a day. In reality, my own ancestors would not have been wealthy. They definitely would have been working class. But there's really not a lot of information on what working class medieval people ate. I mean, that kind of goes with everything working class. We don't even have a lot of information on what working class people wore. So this is my compromise to try and make things a little bit more straightforward and to be able to get a nice diversity of different recipes to try out and for you to all get to experience. Some of the days as well, we're going to be eating leftovers because I truly do believe that if there were leftovers, they would have been consumed historically, even by wealthier people who could have afforded more things. This is just my opinion though. I don't actually know if this is based in factual reality, but that's what I'm guessing. So we're doing leftovers sometimes because leftovers are great. Come on, we all know we love leftovers. I hope you'll enjoy this journey for an entire week. It's so exciting. I can't wait to eat so much medieval food. <laughs> But first, she had to make the perilous and time-consuming passage downstairs and get into the festive spirit. So a few things about this challenge. First of all, I cannot eat wheat, which means that some of the recipes are going to have to be modified. Thankfully, I can eat rye bread. So I have purchased a lot of rye bread from my local baker. <laughs> I also normally never cook using recipes. The only time I use recipes is when I bake. That's because I learned how to cook from the women that came before me, just sort of intuitively knowing when things are ready. So it's going to be an interesting experience. I find that by using recipe books, it tends to slow me down a lot. But I've planned the entire week of recipes and because it's winter, it's just constantly dark. So <laughs> there's not gonna be a lot of uh, natural light coming in through the windows in a lot of these shots. It's those heavy rainy days that I love so much but they definitely don't make for the ideal filming conditions. Well, let's jump into it, I'm super excited. And so her adventure began with a bowl of four eggs, a lot of rye bread, and a heart full of hope. What am I looking at? Poached eggs in a mustard sauce with rye bread and butter. Mustard sauce? Yep. Well, I'm curious. All right, dig in. Try it. Here we go. Medieval day. Oh my gosh, I made like the perfect poached eggs. I don't always get it right, but I did a good job this time. So good. 
going to be interesting because I don't normally enjoy mustard, but this isn't, oh. your, this isn't your typical like yellow. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Oh, it's spicy. Oh, that's actually good. That's really good. It's going to be like a lot of crunching noises in this. Mm -hmm. Medieval ASMR. I'm going to be so spoiled after this week. <laughs> I like to spoil you mm -hmm. <laughs> with food. <laughs> it's like Hansel and Gretel. A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Came out perfect, yay. Just look at that run. I cannot make a mess of myself. <laughs> How many curdles out of five curdles would you rate this meal? Out of five, three and a half. Three and a half, that low? Because I'm, 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 I feel so offended and heartbroken. No, 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 no. It was simple. And I think it's also because it was breakfast. Like, I, I think I'm, I'm trying to leave room for a higher rating for once okay, it gets to supper okay, time. Okay. I would give it four out of five curdles personally. But yeah, like Brittany said, it's a very simple meal. So I think it doesn't necessarily show the full complexity of what medieval food can do. I think that's where I'm coming from. That's more so where I'm coming from. I know there's more to, more, more to see. On to lunch we go. Woo! I'm trying to check the audio right now and I just wanted to show you all something really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not working very well, is it? <laughs> it's a look. Yeah, it's a look. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're gonna keep going on towards lunch. <laughs> the past and present meet. And after some therapeutic chopping, the next course was nearly ready. Your spoon. Spoon this time, okay. Yeah, we got a spoon this time. So this is brie with herbs and nuts. And it's a meal of cheese. Yeah, it's a pretty dairy heavy <sighs> course. I don't know, I think it would have been served like in a banquet, you know, like many different courses, but because yeah. we really recently had breakfast, I thought it'd make the perfect lunch, but it's a ton of dairy. It's basically just like pure dairy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> have fun. <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Okay. Yeah, not for anyone that's lactose intolerant, that's for sure. Mmm, it's good. Mmm. I'm sure it helps that I have like a cheese person that I go to that gets me the best cheese, but mm. still the sauce is so nice. Oh my gosh. I don't think my body is liking having this much dairy already, but this is going to absolutely be a mistake later on. <laughs> but right now it's good. It's very good. <laughs> it's um, funny because you don't even pronounce good like that in Dutch. Isn't it like Huda? 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 Fun fact, I eat way more food than B. So every time I give portions, I just try and give myself a much bigger one. Mm-hmm. And I eat, like, for three people. <laughs> <laughs> Between us, there's a balance somewhere. What did you think of it? Five. Five? It was a five? I have missed cheese so much. <laughs> Is that why? It was also just really good. It was just enough. It didn't feel like an overindulgent treat. I would give it a four out of five curdles because I don't think I like eating that much dairy in one go. I love cheese, truly. Like, don't get me wrong. I, I love cheese, especially this one cheese that we used for this dish. That is my favorite cheese ever. Yep. With the creme fraiche and everything else, I think it was just a lot for me. I think I just like that cheese on its own, to be totally honest, more. Till the next one. See you at dinner. So she sliced the onions and even more bread and tried not to cry, and it would soon be supper time. So I thought the portion size is gonna be bigger and we'd have leftovers for tomorrow. No leftovers. No leftovers. And we may mm. need a snack after this. <laughs> A medieval-appropriate so. snack. This is haddock in a tasty sauce, except I didn't have haddock, so it's cod in a tasty sauce. Eey, yay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Dig in. I don't know how tasty the tasty sauce is, but we'll see. I don't like it. <laughs> it's flopped. <laughs> I probably put too much bread. I'm sorry, bread? 
Yeah, there's bread in the sauce. There's bread in the sauce, okay. It's like a bread sauce. It's intriguing. So I deviated a lot from the recipe. Okay. Like not ingredients wise, but I had to basically replace brown ale with like an IPA because that's the only thing I could find gl gluten free. That's what I'm tasting. And white bread, I had to replace it with rye bread because I can't eat white wheat bread. Of course, of course. And also I decided just to poach the cod instead of frying it because it was already like crumbling so much yeah. <laughs> that I think frying it would have been a nightmare. Yeah, it gets a little bit better with each bite. It's growing on me. I kind of like it. Is this like the medieval version of beer battered fish? I guess. <laughs> it kind of is a little tasty bit. Tasty sauce. So what would you rate cod in tasty sauce? I'm torn between the three and the 3.5 again. Wow, that's higher than mine. I give it a two out of five curdles. Yeah, she, she wasn't a fan of the sauce. No, <laughs> this lack of vegetables, fresh vegetables. That point right there, that's gonna drop it down to three. I don't know how I'm gonna get through the week. I'm gonna be a bit hungry and also I'm, I, I can't do with all this bread. I don't eat this much bread normally. Well, let's see how day two goes. <laughs> yeah, that's day one done. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> this is progressively gonna get harder. <laughs> yep, I think we'll be okay. <laughs> okay, so we pretty much just ate a second dinner. I made some mussels, which I figured was pretty medieval. I just steamed them in water. We had lots of nuts. Yeah, just tried to load up on as much extra nutrients as we possibly could. So I need to plan a little bit better tomorrow and for the upcoming days and maybe revisit the menu that I created. Just try and figure out how we can get more greens in our diet as well. Definitely need to adjust a few things and move forward and see if we can make it a little bit more well-rounded and larger portion sizes. All right, see you for day two. Good morning, everyone. It's day two and it's actually morning this time. It is late morning, but it's still morning. So that counts for something. It's slowly getting better. So I learned a lot from day one and I went a little bit back to the drawing board for day two and prepared the menu in a new way that I felt like would maybe suffice with regards to getting enough protein, which I find that I need a lot of. And in general, just having more vegetables and fruits. And I really struggle if I don't have enough vegetables every day. <laughs> this is actually something that really surprised me about upper class medieval food. There are so many almonds involved in many of these recipes, including a lot of the use of almond milk and just almonds everywhere. I don't know why almonds, but I'm sure that there's some reason as to that. It also looks like my art installation that I made here is uh, coming out of my head, <laughs> but I'm feeling good. I've got my hair wrapped, I've got my curdle on, and I'm ready to get to day two. I don't normally cook with sugar, so this is going to be an interesting experience. Apparently, for medieval people, sugar was considered a type of spice, so they would just add it into all sorts of dinner recipes. <laughs> and although adding the sugar felt like a precarious endeavor, the adventurer had to trust the process. Here is breakfast this morning. Ooh. Yeah. Are you confused? Yes. Yes, you should be. So this is an apple omelet. Okay. It has apples in it. Deconstructed tart. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and a little slice of nut bread. Yes. That cause... I bought. They said it's best to serve it with bread in September in the book. It's November is the November. new September, right? It's November. <laughs> That's close enough. It's weird, but good. It almost kind of reminds me of like potato pancakes with applesauce. Raina's seeing one thing and tasting another, but it's good. Mm, it's really good. It's not the most visually appealing. It's a little bit gray. It might be my pan. Well, that just means extra iron. <laughs> so what did you think? Five. Five. Frickin' five. It, it was is really so good. good. Yeah. I think wow. I've eaten so quickly. A five. I give it a four and a half out of five. And I don't know, I think that's only because I'm kind of not happy with how the egg cooked in my pan, but it tasted really good still. It didn't taste bad at all. Time for lunch then, woo! Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm cooking right now and I just whacked myself in the forehead with the cast iron pot lid. You can probably see it here. So yeah, if um, there's a bruise in the future videos, <laughs> you know what happened. <laughs> but it's looking good, it's all coming together. Got everything cooking here in a pot for now. 
It'll soon be much smaller because it's spinach and we all know how spinach cooks down. She's told me not to look, so I'm being good. <laughs> yeah, I want to get your organic reaction to okay. the soup. Hey, you said soup. Oh, I said soup. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and look. This is like my favorite color. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Finally, we're getting some greens in us. I was dying. A vegetable. I know, I was dying <laughs> yesterday. I was like, where are all the vegetables? Oh, wow. It's so vibrant. Okay, I'm excited for this. So this is called jaltas. I don't know how to pronounce it, with almond milk. And it was often eaten as just a meal during Lenten by like the monks. This is obviously our lunch, but as you can all see, it's dark outside. So we're having yeah. lunch at five o'clock. <laughs> Because apparently we can't eat on a schedule. No, what are normal living hours? But also we had a massive breakfast, which we had kind of in the late morning. <sighs> yes. And then also we had like some snacks and then we went out. So I think it makes sense that now we're having dinner, lunch for early dinner. We'll just have supper at nine o'clock. Yeah, fine. we're just gonna eat really late for supper. We're still doing the three meals though. Oh, that is comfort food territory. But it's good, it's, it's kind of like, it's mm. not as like, spices and flavor as I would normally cook things with, but it's got this like hearty yeah. consistency to it. Am I tasting mint or citrus in that? Lemon rind. Lemons, that's what it is. My body is so happy that I have greens right now. I can feel myself reawakening. Yep, yep, me too. <laughs> I need greens so bad in my diet. I need vegetables. It has almonds in it. Which is why you can almost taste like the marzipan quality mm. too. It's sort of that sweet mm -hmm. underlayer. It's because of the almonds. So what'd you think? Can I break the scale? Yeah. 10? 10 out of five? Yes. Curdles? Oh. It was so good. We added a little bit more salt and that just did it. That just, just a pinch. That just knocked it out of the park. It was oh. such a good soup and really filling. I feel full right now. And, and I said yesterday, I eat a lot of food. <laughs> I had a second bowl. I'm going to give it a six out of five curdles. Ah. <laughs> I can't quite go up to 10. It feels criminal somehow no. to like give that many extra curdles. I was getting a bit sad today and I couldn't really figure out why. And no more veg. Yeah, and, and then now I had some greens and I feel like myself again. I feel like I just pepped back up. So I said to Vasi afterwards, like I feel like I finally had food. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Alrighty. You look so pretty right now. Yeah. <laughs> In the lighting. There you go. Oh my gosh. So that's what I've been smelling up there. So it's chicken and rice with almonds. More almonds. Yes. <laughs> it's cooked. So many almonds. In an almond milk. Cooked in an almond milk? Yeah. Ooh. Or milk. Oh, that's good. I don't know why I was thinking like, oh, there's almond milk in it. It's going to taste like almonds. Nope. It tastes like chicken stock. The almonds, I think, just make it more creamy. Day two has been so good. <laughs> no, this is this is a real meal. Real deal meal. I think I could have laid off the stock on the rice a little bit. It's a little bit salty for my preference, but I tend to undersalt things. Mm. This next thing is dessert. It is a spiced pear soup. Oh, and it it's warm. Yeah, it's served either cold or warm but not hot, I guess. You like it? I do. I definitely went heavy on the spices. Oh no, I got soup, pear soup on my oh no. table. It's getting like spicier as we get towards the bottom. I, I spiced it more <gasps> than was recommended. Yep, I just felt it. In the book. <laughs> I just got a good mouthful of it. I put black pepper in it. Oh, it's the black pepper. Oh, it's good though, I kind of like it. Mm. It has beer in it, gluten-free beer. It's also alcohol-free beer. <laughs> So that's the only thing I could get. That was a lot. That was a lot of food. What would you rate the chicken and rice with almonds? Four and a half, I think. That was very good. The only thing that could push it to a five, A, little less salt. <laughs> <laughs> or B, vegetables. I salted that thing way too much. I would give it a four out of five curdles. That was my mistake though. They just said put a strong stock. So I was like, okay. And so I just started pouring and pouring the stock. So the spiced pear soup, what would you rate that? <sighs> three. A three. I think a three. Yeah. It's heavy and it's thick and it felt kind of like drinking a sauce. 
The flavor profile, very good, but it's intense the further down you get. Yeah, all that cinnamon I put in sedimented yeah, down into the it, bottom. Yeah, it, it hit the bottom and then hit the bottom of me. <laughs> 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 My belly's a little bit on fire. <laughs> I didn't even notice there was beer in it. That's one thing I didn't really like about it was just how much beer there was because I don't really like even drink, you know? No, so neither do I, so. It felt heavy, you know, the, Maybe the beer aspect. Maybe that's what it is. I'm gonna give that one a two and a half out of five because I really didn't enjoy the beer part. I feel like there's a lot tastier pear type desserts that are not that. It would probably be a good meat sauce though. I'm way happier with the amount of vegetables we had today. I still don't mm. quite feel like it was enough, but the jout has kind of like held us over. Yes. And at least we're not hungry right now, like no. we were yesterday. Not hungry. We have leftovers for tomorrow, so tomorrow's gonna be a leftover day. Day two down. Bye, see you on day three. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is day three. Still dark as ever, cause it's winter. <laughs> today we're going on a day trip somewhere. And so I just wanted to eat leftovers today. We've got plenty left from yesterday. So I thought I would just throw some different meals together. We've got things like apple omelet and jowtas with almond milk, a little bit of chicken left. So yeah, there are a lot of options and I'm kind of relieved because no one tells you how much work it is cooking three meals a day and then filming the whole thing. I told B last night that if I ever get the idea to start a cooking show for her to stop me because yeah, it is a lot of work. I have a lot of respect for people that cook that much food in a day. Obviously I cook three meals in a day, but I do a lot of meal planning and the foods that I eat are a little bit simpler to be totally honest. I have my foods that I know always work for me and don't make me feel like I'm not getting enough vegetables. <laughs> So yeah, somehow this just feels like way more work for some reason. And I think a big part of that is because I'm having to film everything. And when you're a YouTuber, you are basically wearing 50 hats, but just as one person. Well, so you can see where the cast iron pot really got me here. That's all that's left. It looks like a pimple though. <laughs> but no, that is from the cast iron pan. As you can see, our taper candles burned Ta out. They, they tapered away. We're, we're, we're out of them. <laughs> we need more. We need more. Uh, we're both exhausted. Yeah. We walked so much today. So I made jowtas from yesterday with mm. the leftover chicken and I put some of that almond broth over it and it was so good. I think it's by far the best thing. Really good. Like I would give that like a 10 out of 5 curdles for ah, sure. See? But that one deserved a 10 out of 5 I think for yes. me. Yes. I made a quick mushroom, egg and onion dish that I just scrambled together in a pan. And mm. although this isn't in the recipe books, it's stuff that I believe would have existed and all the ingredients are in the book elsewhere. We had some pears and other snacks throughout the day, some almonds, more almonds. Yeah, we took some nuts with us on our excursion. So for breakfast this morning, we had the apple omelet from yesterday that was left over. And then I sort of bulked it out by also including some bread and butter and then some fruit as well. How do you feel about today's leftover meal? Good. It was way easier for me because I felt like I didn't have to film everything and it felt like taking a little vacation for a day from filming in a way. <laughs> just, <laughs> so, a, just a wee break. We'll oh. see you all for day four. Yes. <laughs> it is currently day four in the morning and I'm about to prepare a brunch for B and I. Because I have a bunch of things I have to do out of the house today, we're going to have a bunch of snacks in between brunch and an early dinner. And then after that, I'm going to make a later dinner. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to it and I'm excited to see how everything ends up tasting. And so she entered into a magnificent world, one full of milk and honey. And she would soon find out whether or not her efforts were fruitful. Spoon morning. It's a spoon morning. This is poached eggs with golden sauce. Pretty. <laughs> it's super pretty. So what is this golden sauce? So it has saffron in it, which makes it gold. And it's milk and honey. It's very biblical, actually. Oh, this is exciting. Okay. Okay, dig in. Once again, poached to perfection. Thank you. It's almost like custard porridge. It is very dessert for breakfasty. It's not overwhelming. No. I think it's easy to tell we're enjoying this just based on the fact that we're so quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what did you think? Yes. <laughs> five. It's very good. Five out of five curdles for me too. It was good. I would like a little bit more vegetables somewhere. I'm craving no. carrots and spinach. You're always craving carrots. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we'll see you for our late dinner tonight on day four. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. <laughs> And then the adventurer conjured up something awfully lammy. Right. 
So Ooh. this is lamb stew. Ooh, okay. Like the medieval version of lamb stew, whatever that means. Oh, I've been smelling this upstairs for hours and I'm going feral. <laughs> I get to try it. I've not tried it. I don't know what it tastes like because I don't taste it while I'm cooking. Okay, on the same time. Mm hmm. Oh, it's really good. Mm hmm. Mm. There's something kind of different about it. I've eaten so many lamb stews because I used to live in Iceland and kyotsup was like a huge thing there. Yeah. But this tastes totally different. Maybe the spices I added? Yeah, there's something in the broth. I think the fact that I slow cooked it forever helped. So you're probably wondering what happened to lunch. <laughs> Oops. I had a really busy day and so I did not have time to make lunch. We had a bunch of snacks that were medieval appropriate and also some of the leftover eggs and mushrooms from yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that filled us up enough and then I just focused on making a delicious dinner for us instead. And boy was it good. It was so good. This is one of the best meals so far. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. How many curdles would you Ten. rate it? Ten. Ten out of five curdles? No, nine. The only thing that could make it a ten is if there was something like turnip or carrots or something in with it. Again, yeah, no we, veg. We had barely any veg today, which is frustrating again. I rate it a 10 out of five curdles as well. It was very good. I did in fact go back for a second bowl. And yeah. I never eat more than one plate of anything, so. I had three. That was our exciting day four, and we will see yes. you all tomorrow for day five. I've got some fun things in store. Hello everyone and welcome to day five. You might be wondering why it is already nighttime. That's because today we took it a little bit easier with the cooking. I decided just to make a very simple poached eggs with golden sauce for breakfast using the golden sauce from yesterday because I had a little bit left over. This time though, I thinned it out a bit with an extra bit of milk. So that made the sauce the perfect consistency and I was much happier with it this time. And then for the rest of the today, we did a lot of medieval appropriate snacking. And I also put together a board of various meats, cheeses, fruits, and bread for us. I'm very fortunate to live in an area where there are a ton of incredibly talented organic artisans around here. So all of the breads and fruits and cheeses were all local and organic. And that just helped for me to add to the medieval experience because they're truly Truly just as fresh as you can get things in this day and age, which I think would have been pretty similar to how they would have been historically. And then finally in a little bit, we're going to be eating the leftovers of the lamb stew from yesterday because we still have a little bit of that left. So we managed to get by with just the food that was in the house already. It was really nice actually to have a mostly day off from cooking to be honest. I was also speaking with one of my friends yesterday about this medieval food challenge that B and I are doing and he rightfully pointed out that it was kind of strange that I wasn't eating raw carrots if I wanted to because those definitely would have been medieval. And then it sort of dawned on me, yeah, why am I not eating raw carrots if I want to? Because people during medieval times definitely would have had access to them if they had a garden or the money to purchase them. So I went out and look what I got. Some carrots, I just hit myself in the face with them. I've already eaten one as you can see, so I'm gonna keep snacking on these and I'm feeling much happier now that I have some fresh carrots. It's amazing what a little bit of vegetables can do if you love vegetables. I'll see you all tomorrow. Then she was to prepare probably the most questionable dish of the entire week. Hello everyone and welcome to day six. The week of eating medieval food is almost over. I have a lot of mixed feelings about this week, which I'm sure I will talk about tomorrow during day seven. For brunch, I put together my own version of the apple omelet recipe from one of these cooking books. Basically, I used all the same ingredients, except instead of making an omelet with the eggs, I just scrambled them all together and made kind of like an apple scramble, which tasted incredibly similar to some type of apple pie. Ooh, my pot is overblowing. I'm still currently wearing my kirtle as well. It's just a little bit cold. So I put on a scarf and a wool cardigan jumper thing that is still historical, but a bit later period. Currently on the stove, I am preparing a cabbage chowder, which I'm not really sure how I'm going to feel about because the smell seems kind of weird to me. So I'm curious as to whether or not it's going to taste good. I'm gonna get back to cooking and I will see you all when we finally try this cabbage chowder. This is gonna be weird, I think. Okay. It is cabbage chowder, that's what it's called. Cabbage chowder. Dig in. No. It's just so blah. I kinda like it. 
<laughs> you like it? It's nothing fantastic, but I kind of like it. Kind of tastes <laughs> like if you took mold wine or mold cider. Mm -hmm. And then put cabbage in it. I feel like I'm tasting the cinnamon, and the saffron is strong. That's kind of it's kind of growing on me a little bit. It's nothing spectacular, but mm. well, well, that was food. That was food. <laughs> it didn't feel like a meal. It kind of felt like cabbagey, spice flavored water. I'm just so glad that our dinner is going to be like protein rich. Yeah. How many curdles? I think two and a half. I'm giving it one out of five curdles. <laughs> oh, no. I just, I have not, oh, I, this my. meal was just so, it was like palatable, but that's all I can really say about it. It was a soup? It, question mark? I guess it's meant to be a chowder. Why? There, no. No. Okay. Why is I, it a chowder? I forgot the word chowder. Like Chowders are like blended and creamy, right? Yes. Call me an East Coaster. If you're having chowder, there's got to be a cream content to it. You cannot be able to see the bottom of the bowl. Yeah, exactly. That wasn't a chowder. They call it a chowder in the book. All right, <laughs> I think we need to go on to the next one. Yeah. See you later. Bye. <laughs> to the next meal. The adventurer knew that things could only go up from here. Equipped with her newfound confidence, she prepared a rather visually intriguing meal. Uh, which one's yours? This one's yours. What am I looking at? This is called chicken crowned with eggs. It's meant to be like a crown. It's I guess. so pretty. <laughs> it's kind of a silly meal because it's like the chicken lays the egg. Oh, it's just... like a chicken meal with like egg in it. I don't know. It dawned on me finally when I was making it. I'm like, why is this so funny to them? It's the because... complete life cycle of a chicken. <laughs> Again, no vegetables. Oh, That's okay. Okay. Plenty of saffron. This is more of the tasty sauce. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a different recipe. Oh, there's another sauce. How many sauces have we been through? My gosh. I added a bit too much of some spice. Is there really too much spice in this world? Okay, maybe there's a little bit too much of a spice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's good. Of all the things you could have brought over, this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> My stomach just made weird chicken noises. <laughs> I think I always talk with my mouth full. That whole like, no, don't talk with your mouth full. How? I never, I never learned that lesson. Will you just be silent at dinner? Exactly, it'd be boring. There'd be no conversation. Hello, YouTube. Yum, 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 yum. <sighs> Oof. That was too much. Yeah. It got pretty bad by the end. Honestly though, I think I have a heavy hand when it comes to spicing things because I don't think that the recipes actually call for this. I'm used to cooking with spices where they're quite complex and you can use a lot of them mm. and it still tastes really good. And so this whole idea of cooking mostly with things like cinnamon and pepper is weird to me. I'm treating it like it's cumin. Though I think it's my fault, not the recipes. That being said, it was genuinely really good. I like the fact that it's, I don't know, the fun presentation of Yeah, it. the presentation is really fun. I think I give it a four. I will give it a four out of five curdles, but by the end it becomes a three out of five curdles. Mm, yeah, it starts dipping towards the end. I can't believe that tomorrow is the final day. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of sad and I'm kind of relieved. I'm really tired of these sauces. I'm not very good at them. Yeah. I think I'm a pretty good cook. I've been told that, but I don't think I'm good at making these sauces. I'm not used to making bread sauces and stuff. I usually make like vinegar sauces. We were talking earlier too about how everything tastes the same because it's the same spices over and over and over again. I like to cook with a variety of spices. It's not fun when it's just the same core 10 spices again and again and again. Anyways though, we will see you all for day seven. Day seven. We'll see how it goes. Bye. Bye. Welcome to day seven, the final day. I honestly can't believe that we have gone an entire week eating only medieval food. That just is wild to me to think about. It is been really an intense week to be honest and I feel like it's been going kind of slowly so I feel both relieved and also a bit sad about the week being over. V is going to be leaving in a couple of days which is hard and I think it fills us both with a lot of bittersweet feelings and a lot of grief because we don't get to see each other much 
I thought though, because she loved the Jouta so much, I'm going to be making it again today for our brunch. And finally, because it's our last meal for this challenge, I'm going to be putting together a special dessert for tonight. I'm most looking forward to that because I've been eyeing up this recipe the entire week, trying to figure it out and also prepare for it. And I also think it's a great way to end off this week. I am going to get to making the Jautas and I will see you all a little bit later. And so the Jautas with almond milk was made and they feasted and it was delicious. So she moved on to making yet another soup. Woohoo, second to last meal. This is exciting. Thank the Lord. <laughs> I have like an onion skin on my sock and it won't stop making noise. Ooh. The almonds are back. So what am I looking at? This is a turnip and parsnip soup. I've been craving turnip. Well, you got it. And it turns out turnip was eaten by all different classes of medieval people. It's parsnip and carrot actually that were considered to be quite upper class. So me eating carrots probably wouldn't be very accurate based off of my own ancestry. Yeah. <laughs> but I really wanted carrots, so I probably would have spent a fortune on those during medieval times, potentially. Yep, most likely. But yeah, turnip was eaten by the common people as well, so it was considered accessible and eventually got replaced by the potato. Dill turnips. It's turnip, yeah, none of these recipes have potato in them. Potatoes came later. Oh, it's nice. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I made a massive pot, so we have food to eat tomorrow. I think we're gonna be basically doing medieval food day eight. So it's funny because there actually wasn't instructions for this recipe, but it gave a bit of a history of the turnip and then it showed the ingredients, but it didn't give the instructions. So I just sort of had to make it up based off of what I was doing all week with other recipes. Oh, this is absolutely magnificent. Little parsnippity. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Can you get it? <laughs> yeah. Super snickety. That was really heckin' good. Yeah. So what would you rate this parsnip turnip soup out of five curdles? I already broke the scale with the Jouta, so I'll give it the same rating. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 5. 10 out of 5. Whatever. I can't get the numbers correctly today. It's because it didn't have the spice blend TM because that spice mm. blend that's in like most medieval food, in this book at least, I don't think I'm going to be able to eat the spice blend in something savory for a very long time. Who knows it just... Isn't there a saying about that? Does like someone there's... miss me maybe if my nose itches? I don't know. I think someone misses me. I'll miss you. Aww, it's preemptive. No. It's preemptive from Monday. I don't want to go home guys. <laughs> but yeah, I could easily go for a second bowl if I wasn't full. I give it a four out of five curdles just because I'm not such a huge fan of the sweet flavor. Well, that was our second to last meal. There's only one more to go. And we will see you all then and it's going to be a very simple meal because i am so done with cooking <laughs> see you all for dinner bye. bye so we are both way too exhausted and there is no way i am eating any more of that cabbage soup from yesterday mm -mm. it dawned on me i just really don't want to nope <laughs> so we're just gonna like pick away at the chicken and make some rice for dinner yeah keep it simple for this Final day. Our energy levels are so low right now. I think we've gone into like hibernation mode. So I thought that we could basically just try our dessert and give that a rating because you all don't need to know what roasted chicken tastes like on a scale of one to five curdles. And so the adventurer prepared a celebratory dessert as the week long quest came to an end. Ooh, this looks interesting. It is rose pudding with chopped dates. It kind of failed, like it wasn't turning into pudding as I was whisking it. So I tried to make it more like pudding custard and then it kind of worked, but it tastes really starchy. Mm. Is it good? This is actually really good. It has a lot of sugar in it. I can tell. I had to buy a bag of sugar for this week because I don't actually own any sugar in my house. I know, you've been going through it too. I'm exhausted, oh my gosh. But you're done. You did it. You made it. Seven days. Seven days. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Seven days cooking three meals. <laughs> Most days. Oh my gosh. Not just that, but filming the whole thing. I'm like, 
This is why film sets have a crew because you're not supposed to do every single role when you're filming something alone. It's good pudding. <laughs> it's good pudding. Leave nice comments for her, guys. She's very much earned it. I'm tired. She worked very hard this week. I have week. to wash one more dish. Oh, I do. No. <laughs> what did you think of our rose pudding? I honestly want to give it a five. Five out of five curdles, and I thought I messed the whole thing up. No, like, it's very, very good. Like, it's light and it's fluffy. I give it a four out of five curdles myself because it was a bit on the sweet side. I'm most grateful for the fact that we have so much variety. At least yeah. we have the privilege to have a lot more variety. We have so much opportunity to try foods from different parts of the world and different spices, and mm. it's easier than ever to get all of them, which is just mind-blowing to me. I think I'm also just glad for the fact that we have, like whenever we build a meal, there's multiple things as opposed to just one. I think it would have been like that banquet wise if banquet you had the style, money, yeah. but yeah, that's the thing is like the less money you have, obviously the less variety it yeah. becomes, even in this day and age. It's been a really nice week though, honestly, and I'm grateful though that it's done. I really am ready to go back to my usual food. Thank you so much for watching this video and we hope that you've enjoyed being along for our journey, our joy and suffering. <laughs> it's been mostly joy. Oh, really quick. What was your absolute favorite dish of the entire week? Immediate answer is the jow toast. That stuff is going to be going in my repertoire. I don't care how much spinach I have to grow to keep making it. But I also really love the turnip soup. If it wasn't as salty as it was, really love the rice. Yeah. The rice and chicken that we mm -hmm. had. My favorite was the lamb soup and the jow toast. How did I forget the lamb soup? Well, thank you so much for watching and I will see you all in two weeks for another video, this time without B, unfortunately. But yeah, you will I'll see me. Home. Bye. Bye. I managed to do all of the dishes. Yes. Okay, bye.